however, extract. Begin to extract. Let's see what we can, what God will do. Praise God. John chapter, John chapter 6. We're talking about life in the spirit. I'm still wondering whether I should preach or not. She just allowed the spirit to flow. But let us receive something. Amen. John chapter 6, verse 63. It says it is the spirit that quickens it. The flesh profited nothing. It said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. <laughs> so the words are spirits and they are life. And that translation will say they are life giving spirits. So the word is a spirit. In John chapter 1, first John chapter 1, it says that which was from the beginning. Let me go there, please. John chapter 1, first John chapter 1 and verse 1. Can somebody read please? First John chapter 1. Go to King James. You know, that translation just put something nice. Just gave me another understanding entirely. Praise God. But just, just go to King James, all right? What's up? Please, somebody with John the one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life he said for the life was manifested he said what we have handled what we have seen with our eyes he said for the life was manifested and what happened and we have seen it and bear witness say, and we are showing unto you that it, so we are showing unto you that eternal life which was with the father and was manifested unto us that which was in the beginning he's talking about what he had seen what he oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god let's celebrate the presence of pastor uh, please come I think this, um... okay, you're welcome thank you very much for coming i'm so honored to have you hallelujah praise god that which we have seen and heard he said we declare unto you that you also may have fellowship with us he said, and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ pay attention i didn't intend to preach, but i think the spirit of preaching has come praise god because this is vital and as my friend would say it's very crucial praise god this is the life. He said, we handled life. We saw it with our eyes. 
we handed and this is the life we are declaring we are declaring unto you for this life was man see life was manifested see it he said this is, is the eternal life he said it's not just life he said eternal life was manifested this is the eternal life that was with the father eternal life that was with the father you know, but the very nature of god was made manifest it became a man because in john chapter 1 st john it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god the bible says and all it goes on to say that all things were made by him and without him was nothing made that was made and it is saint john not first john and then i'm going on to say he said in him was life in him was life so, and the life was the light of man the life was the message so, the life was the message it comes says because in joint that the first joint that one four five says that ye may have that, that which we have seen and declare which we are handed and declare that, uh, um, seen and uh, seen and taught, declare we unto you so that you may have fellowship with us that, and this is the message which we are declaring unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all say he that says he there's so much in that verse St. John 2, verse 12 says and the word was made flesh say, and it dwelt among us First John that is John 1 13, 14 say, and we beheld his glory so we saw it and the life was manifested and we saw it we have seen it praise god so we have seen it so the life is equal to the world and this word jesus said is life giving so the word is a quickening spirit so the word is a spirit oh my god romans 8 who say is it for, for the law of this for the law of the spirit of life so the spirit that we have in christ jesus is the spirit of life the spirit of life gives life when there is life that means there is a spirit where there is death that means there is a spirit and that spirit is the spirit of death where there is drunkenness there is a spirit of what drunkenness to the drunkard he has a spirit called the spirit of drunkenness you will name an effect after the spirit or you name the spirit after the effect you don't get me. then you get me eh? if what you do dies anything you do dies marriage dies business dies job dies the spirit of dying of death is at work if what you do fails exam you fail business you fail reading bible you fail doing this one you fail relationship fails everything around you fail 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 that means the spirit that is working in you is the spirit of failure do you get what i'm saying so for jesus to be a life giver his spirit had to be the spirit of life no but I, remember i told you that the spirit means move 
Eh? The spirit means move. Eh? The move of God is the spirit of God. When God is in action, what you see is the spirit. What, what that expression, and God came, you tell me, and the spirit of God came. That's what I'm saying. Then, and the spirit of the Lord grew, grew, and came upon him. That is God coming on, upon him. That movement is what we call spirit. You can call it wind of God. When the Lord passes, what do you feel? How do you know that a, 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 a lorry has passed? By the wind. Is that what I'm saying? By the wind. So when God passes, what you feel is the spirit. The word for spirit, pneuma, means wind, blow, breath. Oh, you get what I'm saying? Eh? You, you, you get what I'm saying, right? So God is life. Jesus is a custodian. In him was life. And this life was the message that was declared to men. And as many as received that message, received the life. So in John, you see the difference. That message, I believe, personal view, because of what I'm seeing. That message, just first John, written to Jews. Because if you read down, it demonstrates it different. It talks about because you think you know him. It was only the Jews that knew him. That thought they knew him. Is that what I'm saying? Oh, you didn't get it. You get it. You get me, right? It's only the Jews that had the pride that they know God. Hmm? Moses gave us the bread from because of their what they they, they were of the genealogy that God revealed his who is acts to and his ways, but they didn't know his way. All they're talking about was his acts. So they were pride, they were they were they were proud of the acts of God. How God gave them the Torah. So to them now they knew God. You get what I'm saying? God was their God. They knew about the circumcision. They knew about the law. So this man grew up. So it took John to tell them that which we you know you know you know I'm even remember that they were seeking for the Messiah. And John is pointing to them that this Messiah we've seen him, we've handled him. So we, I am telling you this so that you will have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with God, and the Father, and with His Son Jesus Christ. Next verse, put it there. Next verse from verse five, please put it. Verse five. Somebody, please read it. The laptop is slow. It's misbehaving. First John, one five. This then is the message which we have heard of him. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Next verse. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, he says we lie. So who is he saying this? He's not saying this to the to the to the Gentiles, he's saying this to the Jew who think they know him. So he said, if you think you know him and yet you have not received the light, the message. He said, you lie and know not the truth. Next verse. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of J. Are you seeing them? So we will come into you know we will be partakers of the same light of the same life so, and his blood will wash us from all our sins next verse so if we say that we have no sin as the jews had that nature we are righteous we obey the law he said we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us because the man that came to give us righteousness to defeat sin was Christ. 
anything outside of Christ can't give you life so the world is a life giver in the world is life please pay attention follow me closely so if you read first uh, John 6 63 it says are you there it is the spirit that quickened it says the spirit give it life it says the flesh profited nothing in matthew 16 i think verse six, from verse 16 someone read please now prior to this time god had asked or uh, jesus had asked whom do men say that i the son of man am some said uh, say, who do men say? The man say, some say you are Elias, some say you are Jonah, whatever, Elijah, whatever. Then Jonah said, who do, me, who do you yourself, who do you say that I, that I am? Then Peter now answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus now responded and said, Blessed are you, Simon Bar John. That means Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood had not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. Hold it down. Sit down. So that means the Father, who is a spirit, is a source of revelation, and the flesh and blood is a source of revelation but he said this particular re revelation is not gotten from flesh and blood this revelation is a revelation that comes from the father you get what i'm saying so that means you can by flesh flesh and blood means through study i hope we know that the the jews or let me say the pharisees and the scribes were people that studied the word when herod was to understand the sign eh, when the three wise men came and they talked about the star and so he what did he do he sent the scribes to go and investigate the, and they saw it and they told him so he knew that that fulfillment Herod knew that's why he sent for the killing of the children two years down he knew that the Messiah was born the Pharisees knew it but they refused to receive him as many as he came unto his own and his own, he didn't say know him not. He said his own received him not. So it's not a function, it's not a matter that they didn't that they didn't know. They knew they refused to receive him. Why? One of the reasons I would suggest is because he didn't come, he didn't play, he didn't fulfill their expectation. You know, they were thinking of a man that will come with sword, but he didn't come that way. When he came, he was his message was against the doings of the scribes and pharisees he was giving them a different mind he brought a revolution a different mindset he was raising men who did not give respect in quote to elders They didn't wash their hands like the elders do. On Sabbath day, they did not, they didn't follow the traditions of the elders. They were following the traditions of the spirit. They followed Christ. So these were people that were in training to live by the spirit. They were not sure. They were just like Paul said, my little children with whom I have traveled until Christ be forming you. So Jesus was 
birthing a generation. He called the twelve in particular. He had deposited something in them. So that even when he was saying, had given them hard saying, they couldn't leave. Because Peter said, where are we going to go to? To whom? So for thou hast the world of eternal life. Are we going to go to? And Jesus, instead of making it comfortable for them, he now said, are you not wealthy? here? One of you. <laughs> One of you here is a criminal. To make it worse. So he didn't pity them. He was forging a generation that would stand the storm. That's why when Peter could stand before the Sanhedrin and defend the gospel, defend his stand in the gospel, said, "This is he that you slew. It is his name that this man has been made whole. That man you killed, both Herod." And Pilate, both Herod and Pilate crucified. Say that man that you people kill is the one. <laughs> and when they saw that they couldn't do anything, they let them go. They only flocked fathers and let them go. Not knowing that the king has nothing to do with their soul, has nothing to do with their passion. It, Jesus took three years, three years, and drilled them. Gave them a, an exposure to the spirit life. That's why he told them to wait. Wait, don't move. You know, the knowledge can shock you and you want to move. But you say, wait, 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 don't go. I know you want to go in and preach the gospel because you have seen me alive. He said, wait, I know what you have known. You know, ah, oh, see, eh? when you see something with your eyes, nobody will tell you to preach the gospel. When there was, there was a killing of people at um, uh, a coming man. Were you not here? People who were in town were hearing the news. They were bringing the, the vibes. They killed two armed robbers. They killed, they burned them. Ha, if you see, it's because they saw it. So they wanted to move around with that same spirit. Jesus told them, well, calm down, calm down. Tarry, tarry, tarry. There is something that is more important than the news. That is the spirit. It is the spirit. That will make the message a reality because what you are communicating is not just a message you are communicating the spirit the message is an is an implement to communicate the spirit as a when you are the day you got born again you don't even know how you got born again something entered your heart you have been hearing that message since when you were small but a day came that you heard that message and something happened to your heart you were broken and convicted why it is the spirit that brings about the brokenness and the conviction so you wait on the spirit when we go out to minister we are not ministering those words we are ministering the spirit he said, when, for you know, when we came unto you, we didn't come with you with words only. He said, we came in the power and in the Holy Ghost. Declaring unto you. My God, listen, we are declaring spirits. We declare spirits. God is seeking for a generation that can communicate him. Not just preachers. Not just preachers. Men that can communicate him. It's not the length of words. It is the spirit that is released. What did Smith Wigglesworth say to those men in the field? Nothing. He just asked, are you safe? And they all broke down in tears. somebody with you. because from verse John 6 you are going somewhere please
from the 35 let's start from there 35 and Jesus said unto them I am the bread of life he that cometh to me shall never hunger and he that believeth on me shall never test there's no time to talk on that let's go next verse but, but I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not next verse all that the father giveth me shall come to me and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out so can somebody read this story? the person will be faster I can't wait for this please Uh huh. Not to do my own will, but the will of Him who sent me. Now, see, this is the will of the Father who sent me. That of all He has given me, I should lose nothing. Uh huh. Next verse. And this is the will of Him who sent me. That everyone who seeth the Son and believeth on Him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day then they just murmured at him because he said uh huh uh huh next verse you see these people they have forgotten what they read in the script in, in, in the scripture I want that to say Rama. is it not so they have forgotten that scripture why didn't they take that message and spread abroad that the child that we are expecting has come? Go ahead. How is it then that he said, I have come down from heaven? Uh-huh. Jesus therefore answered and said to them, Do not come among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father will nah. send to me. No one can come to me except the Father who sent me draw him and i will raise him up at the last day next verse uh -huh. they shall all be taught of god every man therefore that had heard uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. he who believes in me has everlasting life I am the bread of life. Your father is the bread of the manna eh, in the wilderness. And are they? Uh -huh. so this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. So I am the living bread. I am the bread that gives life which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he will live forever and the bread that I shall give him is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world so he gave his word his word became flesh that flesh is what we feed on I am the living bread which came from heaven, and if, if any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Next verse. The Jews among the now, I'm, drive, I'm driving us to a point. Eh? How, can How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless you eat the flesh. Of the son of man and drink his blood in other words in lapid of the in other words you partake of of salvation the finish um the finish work on the cross as pertained to the spirit eh? i hope you know that the finish there's a finished work of the cross appertaining to the spirit another one appertaining to the soul and to the flesh is the cross the one that Jesus was to do he had done it if only the next one is for you to carry that one is the ongoing work of Christ in the body of Christ to bring you to the place of unity with him 
a place of purification, sanctification. We are blessed where the motions of death, of sin has been pushed out of your life. In short, not just point, has been crucified. You get what I'm saying? Okay? So then Jesus said, when I say unto you, except eat the place. What have you even got me there? Okay, that this message here, what here, is talking about what happened, what happened on the cross. However, there is an eating to do. We have eaten of the blood. We have now come into life. Next verse, go ahead. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. So, if you stop there, you realize that he's talking about salvation on the cross. Hmm? Okay, now if you go ahead. For my flesh is food indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me. And I in him. Now, oh my God, now pay attention. So as the living Father sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that feeds on me. Now, feeding is not eating. Feeding, not be eating. Hmm? Sit down. So he that feeds on me shall live by me. So what Jesus was saying, that the living father has sent me. And I live. So this is how I live by father. I live by the father by feeding on the father. Put it in the amplified. Just as the living father sent me and I live by through because of the father. Even so, whosoever continues to feed on me. So it's not a one time feeding. It's a continuous feeding. You see, you don't see the effect of a meal, of a food when you begin to eat. You see the effect after many days. So the reason why we are we have been our destiny has been truncated, we have we are stunted in the spirit, we are we are like caricatures, people that have that have koshoko. Eh? We are we are lean and we are as if there is no life in us because we are like people who are destitute of bread, is because we have refused to feed on the bread of life. It's a bread of life. So it may not give you life at one day, one day. It's a bread you have to continue feeding until life is manifested in you. So the believer has a job to do. The job of feeding. It reminds me of a vampire that feeds on blood he has to continue feeding on blood for him to survive because the blood gives him life somebody get what i'm saying so i'm not calling you a vampire but what i'm saying is that you are feeding on the body of christ and that body is the word that was made flesh so the word today is in the heavenly dimension it has translated itself into the spiritual realm so the world became spirit again oh I'm going to him. Eh? i know he is flesh but don't permit me to use this illustration he has become spirit in, again so that men can consume him and become that flesh the world is seeking expression in the human body he's seeking express he's seeking to consume your human flesh and to give you a supernatural flesh that's what the world is seeking for when the world came and met mary it overwhelmed her the bible said and the spirit said and and that thing that you talked about being overshadowed I said, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you and that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of the highest the 
the manifestation of the sons of God is about the consumption of the human of the, of the man by the power of God to bring about a seed of the sons of God. So what do we do? We feel the word. So when the Jews did not understand what kind of saying is this? Are you there? Next verse. 58. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It is not like the, the manna which our forefathers ate and yet died. He who about now he who takes bread for his food shall for his food he who takes this bread for his food shall live forever so eternal life is a function of consuming the bread of life <laughs> ah, you know we have life the spirit is in our the spirit of life is now he that had the son has life so we have life in our spirit man however our soul and our bodies has been limited from experiencing that life so if a man begins to eat eat his word he is bringing the spirit dimension into the soul realm and when the spirit dimension permeates into the soul it definitely affects the body the body will begin to cash up will begin to catch up with what is happening in the soul how the Bible says, as a man think it in his heart so is it the body conforms to what the mind thinks body conforms so a time has come for us to begin to hold on to his word feed we feed you don't rush the word the word is not for preaching the word is for transformation you have the word to be transformed by it's not for you to run on the street and start preaching you have to be transformed see you begin to preach what has affected you eh? i know there's a message from god a message from god is the one that is a message the one god sent you this one are you <laughs> now god sent you you have you have not yet arrived but the lord said go and preach it so you now go as the servant because thank cryer that carries message to the king they are drunk most of them are drunkards they look like this what is important <laughs> is the message <laughs> not the drunkard even if it comes like this in stupor for meeting as he tells you the word of the king if you like don't go sit down there so, um, the, the, i don't mean that one no however whatever message God passes through us is first for you and the people so even if you're not there there must be a desire in you to be conformed to that which we have preached somebody get what I'm saying you might not be there but the message preached releases the spirit that will take you there huh Jude 1 verse 3 Bible says he manifested his word through preaching. Eh? No, not you. Titus one verse three. Sorry. Manifested his word. So, so that we close. Let's go back. Go back to John. So we close quickly. I, I thought I would preach small. Because sometimes we have consumed. You know, I like teaching. Eh? 59. 59. This thing said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Go ahead. 60. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? Next verse. When Jesus knew in when Jesus knew himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this does this offend you? Next verse. Next verse now. 
It is the spirit. That, so what Jesus was saying, it is the spirit that quickens it. Which means, it is the spirit that gives understanding. Life giving is understanding. Life is a knowledge. And this is eternal life. That they may know you. Ay, good dear. The one through God. And Jesus Christ, the Son. So eternal life is a knowledge that we have been exposed to. That's why Paul will cry. See, when we talk about the mystery, mystery means that unto you is given to know. The, that means you have the right to know the secret things of, about, about the, the mystery then has to do with the gospel. The gospel. So you need, you have the right to know the, the gospel, what was done, the benefit of the gospel, the provisions in the gospel, the the, the, your inheritance through the gospel your placement your stand your identity through the gospel it is your right to know so unto the those who believe are given to know but to the unbeliever who do not believe it is not given to them it is not their right that's why the carnal man cannot understand the thing why it is not given to him is given to us so this thing that you are coming to 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 search and and however listen however 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 even though we have we know the gospel there are yet many things that we don't know so there are still mysteries that must be uncovered in as much as christ has not yet been revealed in our mortal bodies we are still to search and uh, otherwise Paul will not cry and say I, I, I cry and say that the glory of Father of Lord Jesus Christ may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him there will not be a need for that prayer if there was nothing left to be seen so there are still many things that will not reveal to the body so the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him has been granted for us to know the things that were hidden so we seek we search it's our place to search we search that searching is where we come to a place of feeding the feeding here is not just eating one we are like ruminant animal and the place of meditation is a place where we feed because it is the spirit that give it on don't, don't forget that the letter kill it but the spirit give it life it is the spirit that breeds understanding so we come to a place of understanding how by giving ourselves to the world and funny enough we have a spirit who is jealous a spirit who is hungry he's hungry for you so your time in football your time in 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 business your time in other things is is you are making him destitute of your heart destitute of your presence so he 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 hungers God is hungry for you. His hunger for you is translated to our hunger for him. Because of his need for you, you see, you feel, you receive the impulse and then you become hungry for him. The moment you enter into the spirit realm, bam! The first thing that comes to you is hunger. Hunger for him. If you don't have that hunger, that means you have been cut short from the spirit realm because the first signal is the calling is the calling even though we are the called out one we have been called yet there is a calling we are called we are called daily we are called into his presence there is that we may know the hope of his call. there is a calling
it is the spirit that gives us understanding and we live by that understanding the bible says by wisdom is the house built by understanding is established god wants to establish us bring us to the place ah, ah, is that giving us understanding how can we be believers and we don't know him you are a believer and we don't have encounter with his word the year 2022 we should give ourselves to the word I know many of us know how to pray we must know him there's no two ways about it you must know him know his nature you can you must be able to recognize his presence know know his feeling have his heartbeat carry his burden you can't carry the burden and be in one house burden will push you out it is burden that keeps men in the place of prayer and after praying they don't just pray there they come out and then they seek for ah it's just like saying you want to buy a car you want to buy please name any car bugatti whatever lexus eh? whatever you want to do you want to buy and then you go and gather money after gathering money you are not happy oh and now i've gathered more money i've gathered money wait go and buy the car now go and buy the car taking the money to go and buy the car is when you have the car you have the money but you don't have the car so what do we do when we pray we make currencies when we pray however the people are not going to be saved you go out and preach the gospel to them if you don't do it angels will bring them and when they come you look at them hmm handsome face fine girl fine boy i like your shade that's not why they came to you they came to hear the word it is the word that saves men prayer creates an atmosphere where the word can be heard where the spirit can enter into men when you speak so we can see this year 2022 understanding that is what we live by as the living father has sent me and i live by the father so he that feeds on me so we must cultivate the attitude of feeding 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 ruminate you get the word in the morning ruminate it all through the day become the word it must see love is something that must it must be our character if it is not yet your character you need to work on it Can we walk in the father how can we walk in christ when there is no love one thing that god will deal with us is love love we'll talk about that one not now life in the spirit is a life of understanding when that realm is opened and we come into knowledge let's stand to our feet I was talking to somebody here a gate was open a gate halalo shelana munde helebo shila Ya balado shada Halado shidelele manda Oh oh shidelele manda Oh ya ya Oh Ha <laughs> ha Hey! 
Get open. That gate of resistance. By knowledge today, you are entering it. Amen. You are entering it. Amen. You are entering it. Amen. And the ghost that and the candles keep at the Yekadadara de Kasuta Yegane Basu Valakaya Lift up thy heads all ye dead Be ye lifted up ye everlasting door Let the King of Glory enter you By virtue of our union with him, every gate, every door that has withstood you, I declare them open now. Amen. I declare them open now. Amen. By the Spirit of the Living God, we are six realms that we are hungry for. Adaya sakada dakayada Adaya kada sakada bakataya Adaya sakada gade kada dada bakaya I hear the Lord say to someone here The ability is given The ability is given The grace is released Shadakarono sabaraka dababa
come. Please, the back. Before I started ministry, I sense the Lord wants to do something new in your life. God is going to give you a testimony. There's going to be an intervention. In your locality, in your family, there's going to be an intervention. And your desires and your prayers for your children, God will begin to walk them out. God will begin to walk them out. What the enemy planted in your body right now is coming out. It's coming out. Lift your hands to God. Lift your hands to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, you will give this lady a testimony. Amen. Whatever was planted in her body that is not of God, we uproot it by the wind of the Spirit. We uproot it. We speak for the healing and establishment. Healing within your waist region, we speak healing. We speak healing right now. Whatever the enemy planted, we uproot it now. Now, in the name of Jesus, we uproot it. Every pain go. Amen. We release God's fire in your body. Amen. Whatever is not of God, we make it uncomfortable. Amen. Right now, Amen. we speak and we declare that you will come back with a testimony. Amen. God will give you a testimony among your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What the enemy planted for good for evil. God is changing it for good. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't want to go into much details, but the Lord is going to give you a testimony. Amen. God bless you. That pain on your waist, we rebuke it. Come on, put your hand on our waist. Can you touch your toe? Can you touch your toe? Father, we speak healing. Father, we speak healing to our hands. Shaku Baba, this year. Nam Sevo. That's all we have, right? Good. To her legs right now. To her hands, Father. In the name of Jesus. Healing power of Jesus. Flow to her hands now. We cause that pain. Whatever took place right now, we correct it. In the name of Jesus. We correct it. In the name of Jesus. And the pain on her. 
we declare it healed healing in the name of Jesus that's what we are Thank you, Jesus, for healing. So lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Search. When you are Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise for healing. The pain goes and come back no more. In the name of Jesus, it goes and come back no more. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. You will come back with a testimony. Testimony about your daughters. Testimony in your family. In the name of Jesus. You are here. One minute. I pray for everyone here. You will testify. You will testify. Every burden led before you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare it uplifted. I declare it removed. I declare it broken. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is giving you the forehead of a flint. You are lifting your head high. In the name of Jesus. A testimony is your portion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Walk up the five persons. Tell them it's good to see you in service. And I hope you are blessed today. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Are you with your offering? Please come up with your offering. Come up with your, with your offering. Hallelujah. Sorry. Sorry. You understand? Sorry. Amen. <laughs> Sorry, Biko. Yeah. Hallelujah. Please, I want us to release as let's celebrate the presence of a brother. I your name does. Wilfred, right? Alfred. Hey. Sorry, forgive me. Next, I won't forget again. Amen. You're welcome, sir. Please, can we celebrate him, please? It's a pleasure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you, are you with an offering? Please let's call uh, uh, Pastor Alfred to come and bless the offering for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you come with me upstanding as we pray for this offering? Amen. Let's lift up our offerings to Jesus. Father, we give in appreciation in honor to your word this morning. We give for the forderance of your work in this local assembly. Thank you because we know we are accepted in the beloved. Therefore, our offerings are accepted as well. Return all the glory to you this morning in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, you may drop your offering drop your offering. Man of God, can I say a few things? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited this morning to be here. I'm so excited this morning to be here. After service, I just had this pool to come and share fellowship with this church. Hallelujah. After service, I was driving back. I had a pool to come here. I know I, 
I saw the ordination the other day on Facebook and I was, I was excited. I was excited. Can we celebrate the grace of God in this house? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The hardest work to do is the work of a pastor. I'm saying that with all amount of understanding. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you celebrate your pastor once again this morning? <laughs> you see, as a student, I wished I met pastors like this when I was growing up. Because sometimes you, you will never know what you have until you, and sometime in the future you get to know, oh, ah, God blessed me so much. As a student, I had the privilege to read certain books written by men of God and I saw my eyes were open to the reality of the truth. But then when you go back to the traditional church, they teach things that are in contrast to the things that open your eyes. And then because we were not bold to leave those churches as young people, we stayed there and we were having identical problems. We're together here. So you read a book and the light of the gospel shines in your heart. But here you go back to your traditional church and the pastor says something different from the light that shone in your heart. Are we together here? What am I saying? I'm saying that you're blessed to have a pastor like this who teaches the truth. That's what I'm saying. You're blessed to have a pastor. I'm not saying to impress him. I'm saying that because it's the reality. Are we together here? It's easy to preach but difficult to teach. I can come, a pastor can come and just preach for 10 hours with just one scriptures. But if you must teach, you must teach and explain with several scriptures. And it must align it, itself. Are we together here? So I like to see that you have a wonderful pastor in the house. And if you're a member of this church, you're blessed. Hallelujah. Most times, people get angry in the church, sir, with the choir. So I don't like the way the choir is behaving. The only thing that is keeping me in this church is the word of God. And I'm happy. Hallelujah. We like get angry with the choir. But since the word is keeping you, I'm happy. For me, it's a credit. Hallelujah. What am I saying? The word of God will keep people. Because the, the word has, is, is life, is self-sustaining rather. The word of God is self-sustaining. He, he, he has a life of his own and is self-sustaining. So I'd like to just encourage you, sir. But you keep doing what you're doing. Hallelujah. And I like to also say to the church, you know, let me share this story as I say the things I want to say to the church. You know, a father-in-law had called his son-in-law and, and asked the son-in-law to help him build a house. And asked the son-in-law to meet him at any time for the necessary, necessary uh, materials he needed and the monies. And at every time, the man will, the son-in-law go miss, goes miss the man and said, I need some more money. And the man will release money. He kept building until the, he was done with the building. And when he finished, the man looked at him and said, I have been, since you got married to my daughter, I've been look, thinking of what to do for you, for marrying my daughter. That house you just finished building is yours. Take it. You would expect that the man will start relating, but he started crying. And so everyone is confused in the house. Why is he crying? You've just been given a house for free. After everything, they asked him, why are you crying? He said if he had known that the house was going to be his, he would have used better materials to build the house. He used substandard materials to build because he just felt he was doing for the father-in-law. What am I saying? Whatever you do in the house of God, you're not doing for God, you're doing for yourself. Therefore, there's need to do it well. We're together here. You're not playing the keyboard for the pastor. You're not singing for the pastor. You're not doing the ushering for the, whatever you do here. You're not doing for the pastor. You're doing it for yourself. There's need to do it well. We're together here. So you don't end up regretting like the son-in-law who wished he didn't use substandard materials. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 6, he says that God is not unrighteous to forget the labor of our Lord. God is what? Un not unrighteous to forget the labor of our love. Thank you so much. I love this church. I'm excited. I like the, uh, the altar. Beautiful. Beautiful. I've learned one or two things here. 
I'm excited. I'm honored to be here, sir. Thank you so much. God help you more. Hallelujah. The man of God, thank you very much. Hallelujah. So we don't we wrap that side. Eh? And then we enter into the other side. Please. Uh, eh? Right, let's welcome uh, our brother Otoba Take over. God bless you in Jesus' name. To those on Facebook, God bless you. Right after now, there's going to be you should drip it now. Offering time has started on your side. Give your offering. God bless you. Also give your offering. Hallelujah. And we are having pastors and position service. So as you are watching, whatever you can give to the man of God. Only bros kabaya. God will bless you. Seriously, God will bless you. Amen. Um, like the man of God has said, I'm doing a good work. So I deserve some alert. Abi? Uh-huh. All right. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right. Don't go up now. Praise the Lord. Can we put our hands together for our past? Please, can we stand on our feet? Please, please. Let's stand on our feet.